Okay, so on here, um, we are going over every single problem that's on here. So um, just bear with me, and I'm going to try and do it all. So classify ABC with the given vertices. Again, yesterday I had said I accidentally wrote select all that apply um, because there's originally multiple choice answers. There's none there. Again, the ways you can classify a triangle, you can classify it based off its sides, or you can classify it based off the angle. So. If you're doing based off the sides, you need to know the lengths of the sides. So one thing that you could find is your distance between each of the points so that you know the length of every side. So distance formula can be used for each one of these, starting with the length of AB. Now again, I'm not leaving those formulas on the board, so you should know those formulas. When I do distance, I kind of use that abbreviated version that's on the board. Instead of writing x2 minus x1, I'm just going to go ahead and do that part of my head. So subtract 3 minus 0, that's 3 squared, plus then the difference of the y's, that's 4, so 4 squared. So that gives us 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so 9 plus 16, which is 25. So the length of AB is 5. Now, do the same thing for BC. For BC, again... Find the change in the x values. Again, subtract them. 3 minus 6, so that's a difference of 3. Uh, 1 minus 5, that's a difference of 4. And again, we notice the same numbers there. It's going to do the same thing, square so root of 25, so it is also 5. Now, for the last one, AC. So we have 0 and 6, so the difference there is 6. And we have 5 and 5, so there's no difference there. So we get the square root of 36, which is 6. Now, if you have two sides that are the same, that means it's what type of triangle? Isosceles. Isosceles. So, not equilateral because not all three are the same. It's only isosceles. Now, you can also classify it based on the angles. And you can use the sides to help you with that because if you know all three sides, we have a formula that we can plug into to tell us whether it's right, acute, or obtuse. What formula do we plug into? Um, Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Which one of these is going to be the c value? The 6, right? That's the longest side. So 6 squared equals 5 squared plus 5 squared. That's 36. 5 squared is 25, so that side is going to be a total of 50. So the C squared value is less than the other side, meaning it is acute. So this is an acute isosceles triangle. Okay. On number two, it asks if the triangle is isosceles, and you're given the coordinates of the th three vertices, then what work could you show to prove it? So similar to what we just did in the last problem, what work could we show to prove it's isosceles? Distance. distance. So you'd want to find the distance of each side so that you can say that at least two of them are equal. So find length of each side using distance formula. and show at least two are equal. Again, in order to have an isosceles triangle, you have to have at least two equal sides. All right, on number three, it says, if ABCD is a parallelogram, prove it is a rectangle using its diagonals. How could we prove that's a rectangle using the diagonals? What has to be true? Hmm? No, go ahead and say it. Yeah. I thought you said the correct thing. All right. No, not midpoint. The distance. Yeah, say you were right. All right. So, in a rectangle, the diagonals have to be the same length. So, if you use the distance formula, you can figure out if it is a rectangle. Now, is that the only way to prove it's a rectangle? No. So, again, it, it said specifically using the diagonals. 
So since we're using the diagonals, we'd be using the distance formula. Again, you need to know the different ways to prove the different things. So on this one, I asked for a rectangle. I could ask for a trapezoid. I could ask for a square. I could ask for a um, rhombus. I could ask for any of those figures. So again, you need to be familiar with those properties. So now using the diagonals to prove a rectangle, we're doing the distance from A to C and from B to D. Those would be our two diagonals. If you need to draw a picture, that's fine. Um, I can give you a sheet of graph paper if you need it for the test. All right. Or if you have your own graph paper that you want to bring, I just have to double check that it's blank when you start your test. So AC, all right, again, going from A to C. So do my distance formula again. Change in the x values, that went from negative two to positive three, that's five units. Po uh, negative three to positive two, that's also five units. So that is gonna be the square root of 50. Now, for BD, I have from negative three to four, that's a difference of seven units. From zero to negative one, that's a difference of one unit. 7 squared is 49, that's 1, 49 plus 1 again is 50. Do I have to actually simplify those? No. All I'm trying to do is show that they're the same length. So right now I have the same number, they are the same length, so we know it is a rectangle because the diagonals are the same length. So it is a rectangle because diagonals are the same length. Let's get that up a little bit. All right, on number four. This one was where I had a mistake and I, I can't remember if it was this class or my last class that caught this yesterday. Um, or maybe it was my eighth period. I don't remember. That should have been rhombus. It, it, it says rhombus at the beginning, and then I accidentally used the word rectangle there. Um, if you were to actually plot those points, you would see that it is a rhombus and not a rectangle. So it didn't have right angles. So if it is a rhombus, find the error in the perimeter. All right. So how do you find the area and perimeter of a rhombus? The what? Distance, all right, how are we gonna use distance? My side. All right, find the sides, all right. What side do you want me to find? BA, all right, so we can find the length of BA. If I do BA from B to A, I could go negative two and negative one. The difference there is one from three Negative three to positive one, the difference there is four. So, save some space there. Um, that's gonna be one, that's gonna be 16. So one in 16 gives us a total of 17. I have square root of 17 right now for one of the sides. What do I do next? Why? They're all the same length, all the sides because it's a rhombus. You times it by four. So I could just multiply that by four. That'll give me the perimeter. I already have part of this answer done. So four times square root of 17. That's an acceptable answer for the one question that where I ask you for the perimeter, I will let you guys either leave it as a simplified radical, so an exact value, or if you want to change it to a decimal, you can. I forget, this one is 16 point, I think one. Anybody, anybody simplify it? 16 point what? 48? Okay, I couldn't remember. That sounds good. I know it had to be more than 16. So then for the area, for the area, we need to know the length of the two diagonals when we're doing area of a rhombus. So we're gonna do AC and BD. So for AC and BD, A to C, we have 
change in that would be five. Change in that would also be five. So then this would be the square root of 50. Yeah. For BD, um, from negative one to positive two, that's a difference of three. From one to from one to negative two, that's also a difference of three. So together, that would be the square root of 18. Now, you could simplify that, but you don't really need to because we're still going to have to find the area, right? So there's no reason to simplify until after we've done the area. So the area formula is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Well, 50 times 18 is what? Not everybody all at once. 50 times 18. 900. So then, square root of 900, well, that's actually a perfect square. It is 30. So then what's half of 30? 15. So we have our perimeter and we have our area. Those were our two answers. Any questions so far? All right, let's go up there to number five. On number five, Tom says that the parallelogram is a square. Jake says it's a rectangle, and Katie says it's a rhombus. Given the following information, who is right? So, looking at these values, all right, let's start with the midpoint. The midpoint values being the same midpoint is enough to tell us that it is a parallelogram. The slopes have opposite reciprocal slopes, so that's enough to tell us that if the diagonals are perpendicular, what shape does it have to be? So if it's parallelogram and the diagonals are perpendicular, it's a rhombus. And then finally, the last piece, these are also the diagonals. This is the length of the diagonals. Well, if the lengths were the same, it'd be a rectangle. Are they the same? No, so it's not going to be a rectangle, so not a rectangle. If it's not a rectangle, can it be a square? No, so it is only going to be a rhombus. So it is, who was it? Katie. Again. As work for a question like this, I'm fine with you labeling what each of them means. That would be fine. All right. Uh, number six. Use slope formula to show that this is a parallelogram. Again, there are different ways to show that something is a parallelogram. So I might ask you for slope. I might ask you to use distance. I might ask you to use midpoint. Again, there's different ways to prove it. So you have to understand how to use each of those formulas to prove something like that. So if we're doing slope formula, how can we use slope to prove it? it's a parallelogram? The opposite's what? The opposite slopes? What do you mean by that? No, nothing about perpendicular here. Two parallel pairs. So what has to be true about the slopes? The same. The same. So we're going to have two, two different sets where the slope is the same in order to prove this. So if we do the slope of ij, again, plug it into our formula. 3 minus negative 1, negative 3 minus negative 4. That give us 4 over 1, which is just 4. Then we can do the slope of jk so we have 1 minus 3 and 4 minus negative 3 which gives us negative 2 over 7 so so far not the same but we wouldn't want those to be the same because those two are next to each other those are adjacent sides all right so let's go to the next one 
So in order to keep our hopes alive that this could be a parallelogram, what has to be true about this slope? It has to be equal to ij, the first one, because these two are opposites. So now, if this doesn't come out equal, would we have to keep going? No, because no, we'd be able to say it's not a parallelogram right away. Well, we have negative 4 over negative 1, which is positive 4. So they're the same. So we still have to check the next one. So we need to see if this last one, IL, is the same as JK. So we have negative 3 minus negative 1 over 3 minus negative 4. Should be negative 2 over 7. They are the same. So these two are the same and those two are the same. So it is a parallelogram. It is a parallelogram. I don't know. Because the opposite sides have equal slopes. So that would be a good way of writing it. It is a parallelogram because the opposite sides have equal slopes. All right. What about number seven? Oh, actually, before we go on to number seven, let's stick with six for just a second. So here I ask you to use slope formula. What if I had to ask you to use distance? What would you have had to prove? Kind of the same thing. We're just going to do the distance of all four sides, and if the opposite sides are the same, it must be a parallelogram. What if I ask you to use midpoint? The midpoint, the same, right? the midpoint of uh, which pieces would you do a midpoint of to prove it's the same? I, J, and what other no, it wouldn't be I, J. I, K, and J, L. Because you'd have to do the midpoint of the diagonals in order to use midpoint to prove it. All right. So again, those are a couple of different ways I could phrase that. On uh, number seven, prove MNOP is a trapezoid. How can we prove it's a trapezoid? What? One, one set of sides is parallel. Now, can both sides be parallel? No. no. So do we need to find the slope of all four sides? No. Yeah, because we have to make sure that there's only one set. Because if we have two sets like we did in the last one that are parallel, then it wouldn't be a trapezoid. It would be a parallelogram. So we need to check all four of them. So slope of mn, 2 minus 0 over negative 1 minus 7 is 2 over 8, which is negative 1 fourth. Then we have the slope of no, which is negative 2 minus 2 over negative 2 minus, oops, minus negative 1. Well, I got a zero on top there. This is going to end up being zero. On uh, the next one, the slope of O, and I screwed up right there. That should have had a P. I didn't realize that. Um, the slope of OP is equal to negative 2 minus negative 3 over negative 2 minus 2, which is 1 over negative 4, which is the same as negative 1 fourth. So we have one set that's the same so far. We need to do one more. The slope of MP, negative 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 7, which is negative 3 over negative 5. That's not the same. So we only have one pair of opposite sides parallel. So it is a trapezoid because it has exactly oh I just think impose the letters there. Alright. Exactly one pair of parallel sides. Alright. Uh, number eight. Is it possible to only use slope format to prove a quadrilateral is a square? I hear a no. Does everybody agree with her? Yes. So yes, you agree, or yes, you think it's possible? Yes, yes you agree? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. What if I said you're wrong? 
Yeah. You can use soap. Oh, wait. We have to use Yeah. Well, there's more than one way to prove that we have a square. So, in this case, if you're just using soap formula, things that you could prove. So, the answer to this is yes. And to explain how, um, I'm going to list it out. Parallelogram. In order to prove a parallelogram, the slope of opposite sides is equal for a rectangle slopes of adjacent sides are opposite reciprocal and then uh, rhombus slopes of diagonals are opposite reciprocal. Kind of ran out of room there. Um, but we were able to use slope to prove it's a parallelogram, which so then we can prove it's a rectangle, which then we can also prove it's a rhombus. And if it's a rectangle and a rhombus, it is a square. All right. Now, again, so I could ask this type of question for anything. I could change out the square with something else, or I could change out the slope formula with something else. Again, that's type of question that you could have on that. <laughs> so, I number nine. Write an equation of a circle. So now, I think from nine on it got a little bit easier. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think the circle stuff is much easier than the yes. triangles and quadrilateral stuff that we had. So, we have the equation of a circle in standard form. They gave us a standard point. They gave us a radius. Just to refresh our memories, this is our equation of a circle. Again, the only thing that I'm giving you guys tomorrow, I'll give you the FSA reference sheet, and that is it. So, plugging in, if you plug this in, we have x minus 0, or again, it's just x squared. Then we have y minus 2 squared equals 4 squared. Again, like I said before, the FSA reference sheet doesn't have much on it. It's not going to help you a whole lot. Um, no, you can't use that one. Nope. All right, again, that would be our final equation on this one. That's it. All right. On the next one. Need it, so? All right, so now we have... Again, all the rest of these are based on that same formula again. So I'm going to go ahead and write it at the top of the paper again, just so we have it. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. So write the equation of the circle in standard form. And they gave us a center point and a point on the circle. So we don't have the radius. We would have to figure out what the either the radius is or at least what R squared is. I highly recommend just plugging into your formula of the circle. So this will be your H and K. This will be your X and Y. All right. H, K, X, Y. So we have 11 minus 5 squared plus 5 minus negative 3 squared. That will end up being a positive here in a minute. Equals R squared. Subtract. You get 6. 6 squared is 36. Um, you're actually going to add a positive, so that's 8. 8 squared is 64. Add those together and you get 100. So our equation of a circle, x minus 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 100. 
and that'd be our final equation. Uh, number 11, write the equation of a circle in standard form, and they gave us the coordinates for the diameter. So before we could do anything here, we'd have to use which formula? So it's going to be similar to this, but before we can do this, we have to find what point? We have to find the midpoint, which is our center of the circle. So to do the center, we're going to use our midpoint formula first. So midpoint of these, negative 3 plus 7 and 2 plus negative 8. So negative 3 and 7, that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 3 plus negative 8 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So that's our center point. Now, does it matter which one of these points we use when figuring out R squared? You could use either one. I'm going to use the two smaller numbers, so the negative 3 and the 2. So plug in, just like we did in the last problem. Negative 3 minus 2 squared plus 2 plus 3 squared equals R squared. This gives us 5. 5 squared is 25. This also gives us 5. 5 squared again is 25. So 25 and 25 is 50. That's R squared. So now we can write our equation. X minus 2 squared plus Y plus 3 squared equals 50. And that would be our equation. Rewrite the equation of a circle in standard form. So now number 12, we have, it's given in what's called general form. Where we write it so that we can identify our center and our radius. It has to be in standard form. So you have to complete the square on this one. Now, you're going to have to leave some spaces. So x squared plus 10x plus blank plus y squared plus 4y plus blank equals, we're going to go ahead and bring the 10 over by adding it. So plus 10 plus 10. So it's now 16 over here, and we also are going to have to have our two blanks to balance this. What numbers get plugged in? <coughs> you said 25 and 4. How did you know that? So the middle number divided by 2 and then squared. So this divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So now, for our parentheses, in order to bring this back down into a binomial, you're taking the square of the first term. So square of x squared is x. Square of the last term is 5. And sign from the middle is a positive. Square of the first term here is y. Square of the last term is Two, sign from middle, also positive. Add those up and you get 45, right? So now that it's in this format, we can figure out our center and our radius. Our center is negative 5, negative 2. Our radius. So square root of 45, but... If we do the square root of 45, should we leave it at square root of 45? Yes. But we're turning into a decimal, but this is one that could be simplified. What's a perfect square that goes into 45? Oh, nine. nine. Yeah, so nine and five. Whoops. Sorry. Nine and five. Um, so square root of nine is three. three. So three radical five would be our final answer here that one again not guaranteeing that you'll have to simplify a radical but if you could simplify it as a radical you should now if it was something like square root of 13 or square root of 11 or square root of 15 none of those things would reduce huh if you left it at square root of 45 i'd probably take one point off 
It'd probably be just one point off because it's not simplified. All right. Um, 13. Rewrite the equation of a circle in standard form. So again, same idea as the last one, but what do you notice about the x squared and the y squared? They have a 5. So what are we going to do first? So divide both sides by 5. Now we have x squared plus y squared plus, nope, not 20x anymore. 4x equals 11. All right, so we got rid of the 5. Now we can go ahead and do our completing the square. We're going to have to complete the square for only which values, the x's or the y's? X. Only the x's. So x squared plus 4x plus blank. Oh, am I too far down? There we are. Plus y squared equals 11 plus blank. So, this term divided by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So, 4 is what we're adding on both sides. So, on this side, square root of the first term is x, square root of the last term is 2, sign from middle was positive. On this side, 11 plus 4 is 15. Now, I didn't ask it on this question, but if I wanted the radius on this one, Square root of 15 would be an acceptable answer because you can't reduce that one. All right. All right. Any questions so far? All right. Last two here. So on 14, write the equation of a circle that's graphed. Well, they gave us a point that we can see here, and that's at the point 0, 1. The radius we can also find fairly easy because... It's vertical here, this point that's on the graph. So one, two, three, four, five units for a radius. So if you know your radius and you know your point, all you have to do is plug it in. So if we're plugging this into the equation of a circle, zero squared plus y minus one squared equals five squared. Again, you should simplify that though. This side, I wouldn't take off if you left this as x minus zero just because it's still proper that way. But you should always simplify this side that's being squared. So five squared is 25. So good. That's our final answer for that one. Number 15 is pretty much the exact opposite of what we just did. You have the equation given to you. You need to identify the center and the radius. So what's the center point? Give three, positive two. Good. And then our radius is two because it's the square root of four, which is two. So graphing that on here, you go to negative three, positive two. And then our radius is two. So go out two units in each direction from our center point and try to draw the best circle you can. I'm not taking off four what it looks like so just don't draw a square draw it rounded draw at least you know those four points and you should be good again the only thing that after going through this I don't think is represented on the test is um, when you have an equation or when you have like a center point and a radius and you're given another point and asked is that point on the circle so remember just plug it in see if both sides come out equal if they come out equal it's on the circle. If it doesn't come out equal, it's not on the circle. Why did it become 2? Here? Because this is r squared. So in order to just get r, we had to take the square root. Any other questions? All right. Yes. 